Here's a great article on who is actually winning the war in, uh, in in the proxy war in Ukraine. Who is winning? Speculation is rife that the U.S., NATO are winning the military war in Ukraine by arming and commanding Ukraine's uh, armed forces. It's proxy war on the U.S. side. And also is rife that Russia is winning the military war in Ukraine using its own forces. But the fog of war and the propagandistic agendas dominate the military war on both sides, both the U.S. and allied side that gets its information, quote unquote, from Ukraine's government and the Russian side that gets its, quote unquote, information from the Russian government. And I agree. Both both sides, uh, as, as Chris Hedges said, who is was a longtime war correspondent, by the way, I did an hour interview with him uh, this this week, which you can watch on YouTube. So uh Feel free to look that up or at leecamp.com if you want to find it there. Um, but the first uh, uh, victim of war, of any war, is the truth. And the propaganda instantly floods in from both sides. Now, I'm not in Russia, so I don't, I don't pay that much attention to what Russians are being told. I pay a lot of attention to what the propaganda we're getting as Americans. And it is... Loads of propaganda. That much I know. It is amazing heaps of fucking steaming propaganda. And so the the truth on the ground in Ukraine is very is often very hard to assess. Uh, both sides are involved in propaganda. I imagine, you know, my, my belief is uh, you're getting far more from the U.S. propaganda side, but still. So anyway, he continues. It's two fronts, though. The, 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 war is two, the proxy war is two fronts, the military front and the economic front. And the fog of war pertains only to the military aspect of the war. It does not pertain to the economic front. And here's how you know who's winning this war. The value of the ruble relative to the dollar and the pound and the euro today versus January 1st, 2022, which was the initial date you know, that's that's the date before anyone had really clear knowledge that Russia was going to invade Ukraine on February 24th um, and that they would be promptly be hit by all out economic war against Russia. Intense primary and section, secondary sanctions to create an economic iron wall between East and West and an economic bl- blockade, uh, if you will, by the West against Russia. So here are the charts showing the ruble uh, as relative to the U.S. dollar. Now, the, or the first chart is. Now, it spikes at first, uh, meaning the U.S. dollar is doing great at first when this broke out uh, because it became clear that the, uh, the, 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 the people believed that the ruble was going to tank due to all the sanctions, due to the economic war against Russia. And then... As Russia played its cards, cards, which was to demand that all energy, they provide 40% of energy to, to Europe, demand that all energy be paid in rubles. All of a sudden, the ruble became very sought after, and it had the reverse effect. All of a sudden, you see if, uh, if you know, this, this first part on the left of the chart is the norm. Uh, after that mountainous peak, you see it drop way below where the norm was, meaning the ruble now has more power. Uh, compared to the, the the dollar, so this is the dollar tanking and the ruble doing better than it was before. Here's the pound compared to the ruble, and same fucking picture. Although actually the pound's doing worse. Uh, so again, spikes initially, but then as the actual chess pieces are moved around and and Russia fights back and and you know. I, I, I'm sorry to reveal it, uh, but the truth is that if you actually look at the numbers and the populations around the world, 80% of this globe, 80% of humans on this globe are in countries that are not siding with the U.S. sanctions on Russia. They're either siding with Russia or they're staying out of it. But despite U.S. pressure, they're not caving and giving in to the U.S. proxy war. Uh, 80% of human beings on this planet. So there's the pound. Uh, again, collapsing as compared to the ruble. Uh, and here's the euro uh, uh, compared to the r- ruble. And that's basically, it looks pretty similar to the dollar. Uh, but again, going way lower than was the norm before the invasion. 
The immediate response by investors to the February 24th invasion was to think that Russia's economy would be crushed by the West. But ever since May, there has been a remarkably stable belief by investors that instead Western economies will be crushed. Crushed by what? Crushed by the UK, US and allied sanctions and by the US, UK blowing up the Nord Stream pipelines in order to lock Europe out of what was and had long been Europe's cheapest and most plentiful energy source, Russia. Now, both consumers and industry in the EU will be grossly overpaying for energy because their governments are allied with UK, US against Russia instead of with Russia against UK, US. They will be paying a hefty price for years to come because they are allied westward instead of eastward. And this is why Germany and France tried to stop this from happening. Like even after the invasion, especially Germany was still, actually both of them, were were still trying to say, hey, wait, 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 we can get out of this. We can, let's have some diplomacy. Let, we can fix this because they knew that their energy comes from Russia and it's far cheaper coming from Russia through a pipeline than shipping it around the world. Far cheaper. Uh, economically, at least, that is who's winning the proxy war right now uh, between US and Russia.